As an EMTB, you will respond to many types of emergencies. There are five basic parts to patient assessment. Scene size up, initial assessment, focused history and physical exam, detailed physical exam, and ongoing assessment. By following this assessment process, you will provide the best possible care for any patient you encounter. You will receive important information from the dispatcher about the emergency. However, do not prejudge the situation. Begin the assessment process when you arrive on the scene. Patient assessment starts with a scene size up. When you arrive, determine if the emergency scene is safe for you, the patient, and anyone else, even if other trained professionals are already on the scene. Dispatch ambulance 25 is on the scene. Yeah. Okay, let's go. If you determine the scene is safe, look carefully for clues that indicate what might have caused the emergency. Finally, if there are more patients than you can handle, call for assistance. Was anyone else involved? No, a single vehicle, single occupant. Was he conscious when you got here? No. Information from the scene size up will help you during the next part of patient assessment, the initial assessment. Sir, can you hear me? In the initial assessment, identify and immediately treat any life-threatening conditions. He's breathing. Let's get an OPA. Okay. Oxygen, how about 15? There you go. Please fit. He's got a carotid. Airway's clear. Breathing's adequate. Let's get O2 going. How about 15 liters on a non-rebreather? Okay. Airway's still clear. Let me tell you. You're on. No obvious bleeding. The final part of the initial assessment is to determine any necessary treatment and the priority of patient transport. No obvious blood. Okay. Once you've made an initial assessment, call for additional help if necessary. Dispatch ambulance 25. Go ahead, 25. We're on scene with a male ejected from a vehicle, approximately 25 years of age. He's unconscious. Unresponsive, but he is breathing. I have an ETA on Medic 15. Affirmative 25. ETA is 15 minutes. Copy that. Hey guys, I was in the area when I heard the call go out. I thought you might need some help. Hey, but I got you ever go off duty. How about the next you? part of patient yeah, assessment yeah, is the focused history and physical exam. The purpose is to obtain more information about the patient's condition without delaying transport. Let's go ahead and get the collar on him. Okay. In the focused history and physical exam, interview the patient or any bystanders if possible. Do a rapid physical exam and get baseline vital signs. Contusion on the left side of the chest. Yeah. Tubes appear to be intact. I'm going to go ahead with a set of vitals. Okay. <laughs> right arm's clear. During this part of patient assessment, focus your efforts only on actions that will stabilize or improve the patient's condition. Clear. Pulse is 120 and regular. Velvet spirits to be intact. Respirations are 20. Compressions at the knee. I'm going to bring it in line. They have weak distal pulses on the left foot. Blood pressure is 104 over 72. Right leg and foot appears to be okay. Are we still okay? Left arm and hand appear to be okay. Right arm looks okay. I'll go ahead and get the board ready. Do not delay transportation to the hospital any longer than absolutely necessary. Bob, you call the roll. Roll on three. Ready? One, two, Three, roll. Let's check his back. Back's clear. Back on three. Ready? One, two, three, back. Your 
call, Bob. Okay. I'm ready. Cots here. The blank in every emergency, when moving a patient, be certain not to aggravate the patient's current condition or cause further injury. Strap. Ready? One, two, three. Hup. After moving the patient to the ambulance, check for any change in the patient's condition. Do a second initial assessment to identify any life-threatening conditions. Sir, sir, can you hear me? Still it's an airway. Breathing still adequate. Still has a carotid. I have medic 15. Meet us on Route 18 eastbound at the County Line Road. Our ATA is about 10 minutes. Copy that. Okay, let's go. The next part of patient assessment may or may not be done. It depends entirely on the patient's condition and time available. It is the detailed physical exam. It appears intact. The detailed physical exam is a thorough head-to-toe check for any possible injuries missed on the scene. Blood in the left ear. Nothing in the right ear. Left people's fixed and dilated. Right appears normal. Clear. Mouth still appears clear. Got a JVD. Got an abrasion. The left chest. Right arm and hand appears to be okay. Let's get another updated set of vitals. Okay. Remember, doing a detailed physical exam is never as important as monitoring a patient's ABCs and caring for life-threatening conditions. Pulse is 90, strong and regular. 90, strong and regular. The latest set of vitals are BP 110 by PALP, respiration 16, pulse 9. At any moment, a patient's condition may change. Your ongoing assessment will help identify changes in status. It is the final part of the patient assessment process. During the ongoing assessment, repeat the initial assessment, check vital signs, do another focused assessment, checking areas you already identified as a problem or injury, and finally, check any interventions you began. We'll advise you of any changes. Do you have any further orders? Negative Reassess the patient's condition at least every five minutes for an unstable patient and at least every 15 minutes for a stable patient. His respirations are down to eight. Let's bag him. In review, patient assessment begins with a scene size up. Determine safety and gather a general impression of the emergency. Sir, can you hear me? Scene size up is followed by an initial assessment. Look for life threatening conditions and decide how soon to transport the patient. He's breathing. Let's get an OPA. A focused history and physical exam is next. This part of your assessment must be adapted to the patient's condition. Collect a medical history, quickly examine the patient, and get baseline vital signs. Do not delay transport of a patient unnecessarily. En route to the hospital, if life-threatening conditions are under control, you may decide to do a detailed physical exam. It may be necessary only for a seriously injured patient. Finally, always provide ongoing assessment of the patient it will detect a change in the patient's condition. Different patient types may require a modification of the patient assessment process. Medical patients may present different signs and symptoms than trauma patients. A responsive patient can often tell you what's wrong. As an EMTB, you are responsible for patient care from the moment you arrive on the emergency scene all the way to the hospital emergency department. Your thorough and accurate patient assessment is the most effective tool for ensuring patient survival.